bond you wear. If they bond you wear too. You just stand up, come and meet me. You don't say do anything. You just talk for nothing. Oh. No, I have never smoked before. I just know to see that boy don't change. Holy Shaolin Temple. Your son don't talk to Ninja. You gotta disobey your parents, Abby. Eh? No, no, sir. You go say parents, I got you say what? It's a manufacturer agency. Magbeti Yadano. From now on, Nimbe is my favorite cousin. But for all the money we are spending on you to go school, you waste everything for him. You Enough. hire Enough! Let me tell him how he has failed as a father. But this is home now. Innovation is the process of turning ideas into manufacturable and marketable forms. Today on The Intellect, we are going to be speaking with the CEO of GVE Project, Ifai Orajaka, who is one of the big names when it comes to solar projects in Nigeria. Good day, sir. Yeah, good day. It's good to meet you. Yeah, likewise. And what's the name? We'd like to meet you. Nigerians at large would like to know who you are. Okay, my name is uh, Ifani Orajaka. I uh, have an engineering background, electrical to be precise, and I lead a company called uh, GVE Projects Limited. Fantastic. Can we talk about how you started, how you got into it, irrespective of the fact that you even have an engineering background? Yeah, so uh, anytime I am asked to talk about how we started, uh, it's usually a very a memorable experience for me because I, I still remember vividly how it all started. Well, we started the company as undergraduate uh, students in Federal University of Technology, or Uwiri. Uh, I and my two co-founders, uh, Chuka Eze and the Kechuku Onyekwelu. Okay. And the, I think uh, one of the reasons behind the company, behind founding the company, was uh, as the young engineering students, the uh, passion or the zeal is always to graduate with a good grade and uh, find, make a way into the oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. And we were right on track on that. Uh, and we had several undergraduate internships with the leading names in the oil and gas industry okay. in, in the country. But while uh, undergoing this uh, undergraduate internship, I think we experienced something that uh, change the course of our career uh, okay. for life. And we were privileged to visit some of the oil field facilities in some of the uh, remote locations in the Niger Delta, and okay. there we experienced firsthand communities that has absolutely no access to electricity. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, seeing that recurring in several mm -hmm. uh, communities caught our interest and. I see, and we decided to see how we can use our mundane engineering uh, skills mm. at the time to provide a solution to solving the problem. Okay, so yeah, for young entrepreneurs who are thinking of starting their business and are concerned about funds, more importantly, I don't know if you could share your personal experience as regards how your project was able to, you know, kickstart with a zero or very little fund. From, and from our experience in uh, starting GVE, it's it, more about having uh, the right model mm. that solves a, a key, a critical problem in, in society. And as you can see, like most of the, the businesses that go on to, to scale to become a trillion dollar companies, billion dollar companies, are companies who are who identified a very uh, critical problem in the society and try to solve uh, the, these challenges. So, uh, and, and that, that boils down to the, the uh, entrepreneur or the, or the uh, startup being able to identify these problems and trying to build a model around uh, how to deliver services that will solve uh, these uh, societal problems. And okay. The essential part of, of a business model is actually uh, ar around having a solution to a problem. Okay. 
like isn't the, the pain of the, of the end user because at the end of the day no matter how uh, stellar your idea is if nobody is willing to to pay for it mm. then it's not it's not going to scale okay so uh, young entrepreneurs should live always have the customer put the customer first in their thinking when uh, creating uh, their, their business but that's the way you know like for young people out there they, there's always this notion that if you're not politically connected you don't know the the who of who of nigeria you probably might not get access to some of these grants or loans uh, which is technically available to everybody yes yeah, so using our business as an example okay. uh, we didn't know anybody in in bank of industry mm. I, I even didn't know a bank of industry existed. I just saw the okay. the uh, the ad on on the internet, and because it was similar or it was uh, related to what we mm. we had in mind, we just put in an application. Okay. And even up till the day of the announcement, we uh, I we we never knew we were going to to win. Okay. And for instance, the the one from uh, well, the the first one from I E. We knew nobody, and it was a global uh, competition okay. that had uh, other uh, mm. competitors from the likes of Stanford, Harvard, uh, mm. MIT, and Imperial College. Okay. Mm. Okay. Amazing. Now let's talk about uh, things that young people need to be careful about when uh, having ideas, and then they want to start up. And there is also the part of, you know, my idea is good, but nobody is buying the idea. So b basically. The, the way you present your idea matters a lot. And the way you approach potential partners or support people, or people who can provide some support or mentors also matters a lot. Mm. So as, as a young uh, entrepreneur, one of the first things you should learn is the art of communication. Mm. Like knowing how to communicate your vision because starting up as a young entrepreneur what what you have is a vision okay to achieve something right. so it all it all boils down to how you're able to communicate that vision to people to get them on board mm -hmm. all right then we have to call it a wrap now and i'd like to ask for your final words and more importantly your advice to young entrepreneurs uh, who are just startups yeah, so my uh, advice to young entrepreneurs uh, one, uh, integrity is very critical because it, it, it will go a long way mm. to helping you build your brand. Okay. And secondly, anything that you currently are complaining about mm. can potentially be a scalable business idea or a scalable business model that can uh, make you a billionaire in a couple of years to come. All right. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thanks a lot, Daniel. Yes. Special thanks to Ifanyo Orajaka, CEO of GVE Projects. For more information, you can log on to our website, www.theintellects.com.ng. Good day. It's another beautiful day on this amazing show, The Intellect TV Show. And as you all know, we are the youths with the nation at heart. So today we'll be talking about this very rampant for a very interesting topic it's setting up a business structure now before you go into business you have to think setting up a business structure what kind of business structure do you want to set so today as usual i wouldn't be the only person discussing these i would always have very intelligent young people with me in the studio and i have a very beautiful lady so ladies first so please what's your name Color value, good. Nice to meet you. It is beautiful. And to my macho man, starting with you. Okay, and you are. Adeguke Ayobami. It's so beautiful to have Ovie, Bukola, and Ayobami in the studio. And as you all know, I am your host, Omwe Basimile and Chidimam. So, guys, we just finished watching an interview with CEO of GVE Project, Ifani Orajaka. And the topic today, which he discussed in the video we just saw, was setting up a business structure. Okay, um, like we all do, I'm going to change. Rather than asking you what you learned first, I would ask you, what do you think entrepreneurs face having to set up a business structure? I mean, what do you think? Well, first, I think um, 
the simple thing is to understand your vision and your mission. And I'm saying that because every entrepreneur goes into business to add value. Okay. You don't go into business because of money. Yeah. Okay. If you're going to make money, then you're not solving any problem. So you solve a problem, and then that would in turn give you value to your consumers. To your consumers. You so uh, if you have a mission and you have a vision for your business, okay, that would bring you to understanding what you need to do, without you, without you to like expand to get people on board with your brand or to facilitate it. Okay. Everything. So I mean, you have to like do a lot of other research, the market trends, you know, try and find your comparative advantages, and all other things. I'm sure most of the things we discussed in this interview, but first off, I think you need to understand like you need to add value. Value first. Find how you can be valuable to people, and then you can start. Okay, but there was something you said. Every entrepreneur um, goes into business with the mindset of adding value. I think that's wrong because I'm not sure every entrepreneur starts with the mindset of adding value. Some might start with the mindset of making money. So it's best you say some, or it's as an entrepreneur, it's best you go into business with the mindset of adding value. I think what you said is true. And maybe the person here would agree with that because I think in this part of the world, Entrepreneurship should be defined differently. What we're doing mostly here is surviving. Thank you. you know surviving. <laughs> yes. Had um, this whole idea of all I just need to do is how am I going to make money? Thank so you. first of all, side you hustle. Understand who you are. Who are you? By the time you get to understand who you are, then you are able to. Oh, okay, this is what I want to do. Now you know um, there 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 will be frustrations. There will be disappointments. There will be. Um, so many challenges that you come across sure. that you to get this goal. But when you get to understand who you are and what you want to do, and it's something that interests you. So even when you have all of these challenges, you discover that um, you, you keep going, you keep on going, because you know that, okay, I love to do this thing. And just like um, Bobby said, I have uh, your solution minded. There's a problem you're trying to solve. To solve. So you have a solution in your mind. You remember what working. pushed you to be. Yes, yeah, indeed. So you're working towards that goal of providing the solution, no matter what it is. Okay. That comes in. Okay. So I also. To add to what my colleague has said earlier, I think most some um, entrepreneurs in Nigeria, what they after is they follow the trend. They follow, they follow the trend. Are. I mean, everybody selling shoes, bags, yeah, and exactly. all. All of a sudden, they see that as a trend. Everybody and you don't even trend. know whether you have a passion, passion for, for it. Or so, and if you, if you don't do it well for the next six months, you move to another business and you think, okay, I did the first one, it's not working, I can't do this one anymore. So, I think most, what really happens, we actually follow trends because these guys doing this is making money, they bought a car. And I think this business is cool, and you don't know the, the, the challenges they are facing, you don't know what they are going to pass through. But you are just, just seeing that good side of him, but you don't know what is facing like every night, what is going through, how he writes his, his papers. What the fuck went out to the next money, but you don't know what it's but you just think it's a good business and boom, you rush into it. Is it okay when you say that everybody has to be an entrepreneur? Yeah, um, sorry. I think, first of all, people should differentiate a business person from an entrepreneur. Yes, very much. Everybody should be a business person, everybody should be able to sell stuff. Mm -hmm. I think. But being an entrepreneur is a lot deeper than that. You are solving a problem, and like I said earlier, the system here. I don't know, this part of the world is it's so much modeled after people trying to survive. And then people don't even understand themselves. Like she said, you need to understand yourself. And then I'm looking at my mother here, we've made money off you know, digital marketing. And I'm like, okay, that's safe for me to do. I don't understand myself, my mission, my vision for myself. And thinking about the value I want to add to society and then getting the remuneration for it. Because money is basically remuneration for value. For value. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not working for money, you're working for value. I like that. If, 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 if you're selling, Say people that are selling drugs, if people don't get saved by the drugs and they're making money, what kind of drugs, please? Let's be specific. <laughs> okay, Let's be specific. Okay, now medications, that's why. Medications now. Like, you have to solve a problem. Okay. You are ill, and then you're thinking, okay, malaria, how do I help people get well? So you do whatever you do. But the point is, if you don't understand that being a business person isn't just uh, trying to become an entrepreneur or whatever, if you want to sell, sell. Don't say you're an entrepreneur. Exactly. And if you want to be an entrepreneur, then you have to strive to add value in society and then change things. Okay, guys. So um, when Mr. Ifani was speaking, there were three things I picked. I picked out loans. I picked out partnership or collaboration. Yes, these were the two major things I picked out. And 
I was also able to see somewhere that said something about having to train yourself, which was something essential you all mentioned, consciously or unconsciously. So, um, okay, can you please um, throw more light on loans? How can loan help a business strive? Do you think it's important for people to take up loans to start businesses? Do you think there are other means where um, revenues or resources or funds can be generated for people, especially SMEs, to start up business or to support their business? Okay, first of all, if you don't know what you're really getting into, don't bother yourself with to get any form of loan. Okay. Because in getting a loan, you need to understand that um, there's a time frame to it, there's interest attached to it. And you need to know you need to have to plan out how you're going to pay back this thing. Mm -hmm. Now if you don't have if you don't have these three things in mind, how to pay back structures and how to pay it back, um, your kind of business. Now if you don't understand the kind of business, don't bother yourself with your loan. Because you get the loan, you're just going to use it on what is not. And at the end of the day, you'll be more indebted than um, the amount of money you have put in. Because yeah, the interest keeps um, you know, going by accumulating. Day day. Yes. Hey, mommy, are you going to, I want you to um, explain more about partnership. Yes, some people only say um, two heads are better than one, but I always say two good heads are better than one. So when you have, um, when you have people that share the same ideas with you, like okay. you, have, you, you have an idea, this is cool. But you, are, you, are feeling, you can't do this alone, you need to talk to someone. And you call your friend or maybe a family member or someone you think this person is very good to you. call him or her and like, let me explain this to you. And the person says, oh, I like this. You might have the idea, the other person might have the financial stability. So if you, you, you can come in and you can come and partner, okay, let me, let's partner on this thing together. Let's come, let's do this thing together and see how we can make it as an idea. But it's always good at the beginning. But at the end, it's always very favorable for most people that are going to buy it. Um, trying to set you out of court and all. So I tell people, you don't go into partnership to make sure your lawyers are involved and make sure the terms and conditions are well spread out. You guys understand what you want yeah. to do. So it doesn't look like one party is cheating exactly. the other party. You, know, you don't really, really don't know what you are doing into until when it's okay. We are just friends. Let's just be friends. Let's do it together. That you start making hundred thousand, you are still friends. Make one million. By the time you, are, you start making five million, ten million. Reminds me of something I heard somewhere in business. You don't remember friends, you don't remember yes, family. Yes, I was going to say that. Be very family. careful. You have to mm, be very family careful. and friends. That's why you have to make sure your lawyers are involved. How can training help businesses thrive? Well, fantastically, if, if, if you check how everybody is modeled, not everybody understands small businesses, mm -hmm. not everybody understands um, corporate management. Can you please explain what analysis is? Like I said, I said the SWOT analysis like, is the strengths, the okay. S for strengths, the, the W's for weaknesses, and then O is for opportunities, and then T is for threats. So once an entrepreneur knows these things, and then I'm sure most people don't even know these things naturally. So I think most people, if you want to do anything in business, once you become an entrepreneur, you need to train yourself, you need to be able to train yourself how to do business, and how to even improve yourself. Because these are most dreams that entrepreneurs have are creative dreams. and you know, like this guy, the guy, the guy we just watched now, a, a, yes. a music engineer. He's not music engineering is not a static job. It's something that you have to learn on the job. You have to constantly train yourself, become better at it. And then, even apart from learning the business side, going for training for the business side, the best result. And all together, you need to package yourself. Like you say in Nigeria, packaging matters. Okay. So yeah, if you don't, if you don't look the part, people won't believe. No matter how talented, gifted, or no matter how much vision or, or mission you have, you need to look nice. Yes. You need to look nice, act nice, act nice, speak nice. So okay. people, people need to, people need to think that's not nice. <laughs> that's not nice. People need to believe Very important. You. Very important. You yeah. have to be not smelling good, you're going to turn it off. That's true. Yeah, it's true. So, so, smell so, is so, important. That's why I said um, people need to have a place where okay. they understand that it's not just the one person thing. And I like what he said, collaborations, partnerships. So sometimes... You can find out that some entrepreneurs are really creative, but they're not really good at selling themselves. Yeah. They, they might need to get a marketer, a salesperson. And for viewers, if you remember um, our last week's topic, it was about technology is everything. So from what you can hear, you would see that you also need technology to be able to have a thriving business today. It's something you cannot um, ignore. It's something you cannot do without. 
so guys i've had a very very wonderful session with you and it's been amazing so shortly before we wrap up um we'll be watching an interview with uh experts in the industry this expert would be telling us more about it so please stay tuned hi my name is sean dania i'm the ceo of trade father nigeria limited i'm here to talk to you about why it's important to set up structures for your businesses so while you're starting up a business you need to decide what type of business you're set starting up if it's going to be a sole proprietorship a partnership or associated trustees and all these businesses require different levels of commitment funding and expertise so for a sole proprietorship you are the one running the show it's all about you you have to come up with the money completely which if you're going for a business with which are going to be raising funds is not be the best way to go so for a proper structure of a business you need to have it fully registered with the CAC you need to have a board of directors you need to have allocation of shares which will be available for you later on to raise funds or to do whatever it is so before you go through that first thing you need to do is to have a business plan and your business plan is to have an executive summary something talking about all your good all your business is going to be about and why you are going into it for young people and you know new entrepreneurs out there i'd like to give you a few tips to make sure to ensure that your business is successful i would advise that you take up an internship or some voluntary service show with an organization that's properly structured so you can understand how this uh, these different disciplines departments and um, the business space works you understand how taxes are done the legal implications of not carrying out some functions within another within the business and I also like to let you know that before you start your business, it will be very, very good to have all your documents in place, all your agreements duly signed, your taxes, your registrations. You know, if you need licenses for any kind of business you are going into, you need to make sure you get all of that done so you are in the good books of your regulators. Yes, most people will always think that it's expensive to get, you know, a lawyer, get an accountant, get the tax professional, but then you can always have shares or you can always have partnerships, structure with your friends who are professionals in this businesses so that they can you can put together a strong team and they can advise you at the end of the whole day one percent of a hundred million is a lot more than hundred percent of ten thousand thank you very much so welcome back guys i'm very sure we learned a lot of things from that interview so in one word just very simple and short how do you think um we can do better especially smes First off, you need to know that you're solving problems in the entrepreneur. Okay. And then you need to know that you're adding value. Money will come. But value, adding value to society is the most important thing. Adding value problems. to your society is the most. I hope we're taking those. Adding value to your society is the most important thing. So, guys, it's been a wonderful session with this three lovely youth. And I've learned so much, so much. I've been able to know what SWOT analysis is. I've been able to learn the difference between a business person and an entrepreneur. The need to know that there's a value out there. There's like there's a hunger you need to satisfy to be a good entrepreneur person. Mm -hmm. So from us here at the studio, it's thanks for watching and see you next time. Do enjoy the rest of your day. If they burn you wet, if they burn you wet, too. you don't stand up, come and meet me. You don't do anything. You just no. talk for nothing. Oh. No, I have never smoked before. I just know to see that boy don't change. Holy Shaolin Temple. Lip, lip, your lip, son lip. don't talk to Ninja. You got to disobey your parents, Abby. Eh? No, no, sir. You go say parents are guardians, say what? It's a manufacturing agency. Magbeti Yadan. From what? now on, Nimbe is my favorite cousin. But for all the money we are spending on you to go to school, you waste everything for him. You Enough. hire Enough! Let me tell him how he has failed as a father. But this is home now. Everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of the Business Quest. My name is God Queen Anike, and today I will be talking to you about privileges. Hmm, privileges. 
Imagine you graduate from the university and you go in search of a job of which your dad owns a very big company, not just an ordinary company, a very big company, like an oil and gas company, ETC. But your excuse is, I don't want to be under my dad. I don't want him controlling me. I don't want all of that ETC. Well, I'm sorry to announce to you that you need that. You need that stepping stone. I need you to understand that privileges are really important. You need to recognize it. That is a privilege and that is a stepping stone to your greatness. John D. Rockefeller graduated at the age of 26 and he joined his father's business and he became the director of the company. Then he moved into being a director with a steel company um along the line he then stopped he had to resign from everything because he wanted to fulfill his dream of being a philanthropist so he remains one of the richest men to have lived now what you learn from that you need to understand privilege and use it well so you will be progressive and not be regressive thank you very much do not forget to register on our Startup 100 on our website. And for more information, visit all our social media platforms. Thank you.